I'm Mike Quackenbush. This is Till We Make It, and often on the program, I speak from a point of expertise. But not today. No, today, the expertise is coming to join me. program we are tackling the topic of people and their pronouns and I have still life with apricots and pears to assist me. So still life. I think I understand when to use pronouns like he him or she her. But what about pronouns like they them? When do I use those? Excellent question. So we already use they them pronouns when you're describing an object that you don't know who it belongs to. For example, I may be in the locker room at the end of the show and find a lone knee pad on the chair. I could grab that knee pad, bring it out to the rest of the group and say, hey, someone lost their knee pad. Other times you use gender neutral pronouns, they, them, when you're describing someone who is non-binary, genderqueer, or otherwise gender non-conforming as myself. Hang on a second. So I just heard you use terms like non-binary, genderqueer, and gender non-conforming. What do those mean? Excellent, excellent question. So those are terms for people who identify as neither male nor female. Sometimes people do this when they are in the process of transitioning and they're experimenting or trying new things with their gender. Um, everyone has a deeply personal and unique reason for using these terms or for identifying that way. And it's also important to know you don't necessarily need to understand why someone uses those terms, but it's very important to respect them, those terms. And it's also very important to know that these pronouns and these ways that people describe their gender, they're non-negotiable. Okay, hang on a second. You said something that made me think of a question. You said, when someone is transitioning, what does that mean? Sure, someone who's transitioning means that a gender assigned with at birth doesn't match their current gender identity or gender expression. So for example, someone could have been assigned male at birth, but they identify as a female. Yet another follow-up question. So, we talked about when a man transitions to being a woman, or when a woman transitions to being a man. But are there other options too? Sure. There are people who don't identify with either binary gender. They are non-binary. Sometimes they, they prefer to be gender queer or otherwise gender non-conforming. Everyone has a unique and different and personal view on their gender, but it's important to know that everyone's gender is equally valid. Hang on, one more follow-up question. So you said when we were discussing pronouns that they are non-negotiable. What does that mean? Sure. People's pronouns are very personal and very important. So anytime you use the wrong pronoun, that's called misgendering. And oftentimes that's very traumatic. Well, I don't know that I've been misgendered, but I've definitely been mistitled. I can remember once someone passing by me saying, excuse me, ma'am, and that made me laugh. But how might that be different when someone who is gender non-conforming is misgendered? So someone who's gender non-conforming or transgender has spent their entire life sometimes obsessing about or thinking about their gender. So it's something that's always very top of mind, and they've often had traumatic experiences, particularly in adolescence and growing up, uh, dealing with their gender. So when you misgender someone, it's very similar to bringing up a traumatic memory for someone else. You don't want to constantly remind someone about um, something very painful that has happened in your past. Follow-up questions, maybe even two of them. Number one, so... <laughs> Let's say that in conversation, I do misgender someone by accident. What should I do? It's no big deal. It happens all the time. Just apologize and move on. You don't need to make a big deal out of it, but just show that you're making an attempt to learn and just keep moving forward. Second follow-up question. So, aside from someone who is doing it accidentally, what if you were in a conversation where someone was misgendering deliberately? Well, that's very rude and very insulting and only done by someone who's being intentionally disrespectful. Okay, so you've done a great job answering all my questions in a broad sense, but I want to narrow the focus now. Why is this specifically important in professional wrestling? Sure, absolutely. The beautiful thing about professional wrestling is it's about aspirational characters for all people. However, growing up as a young wrestling fan myself, I never had characters that I could fully identify with. And something I've learned and experienced as on my journey is still life with apricots and pears, almost every single event I'm on, I have fans that come up to me and they come out to me and they share their story. And it just shows how important visibility is for underrepresented people. Still Life, thank you so much. I feel like 
We've only started scratching the surface of this topic. How can I learn more? Sure, YouTube is a great source of information for this, for this kind of thing. And I put some of my favorite videos in the description below. Outstanding. And while you're in that description, surfing around, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. You keep on being awesome. We will keep on making the videos, and together, we'll keep on faking it. Till we make it. We don't say that here.